Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Selamat datang saya ucapkan kepada pelajar-pelajar dan penonton program ke slot kedua program Bual Bicara Bersama Pakar STEM. Tadi kita sudah dengar perkongsian tentang bioteknologi daripada penceramah di slot pertama. Sekarang anda akan bersama dengan saya, Syakil Abidin Said Ibrahim iaitu moderator anda bagi slot kedua. Untuk pengetahuan penonton, uh, tajuk slot kita pada pagi ini ialah Kejuruteraan Pembuatan. Okey, sektor pembuatan seperti pengetahuan semua adalah asas penting kepada setiap industri dan pembuatan jentera. Contoh-contoh mudah bagi hasil industri reka bentuk dan pembuatan adalah seperti pesawat, perkakas rumah dan automotif. Jadi hari ini kita akan mengupas apakah itu kejuruteraan pembuatan, peluang pengajian yang disediakan, prospek kerjaya serta ilmu asas yang perlu dipelajari bagi setiap jurutera pembuatan. Semuanya akan dikupas oleh panel kita yang hebat orangnya, okay, secara atas talian. Diharap para penonton akan terus bersama kami sehingga ke akhir program. Dan anda juga boleh mengutarakan sebarang soalan atau pertanyaan di ruangan komen. Soalan-soalan tersebut akan saya bacakan untuk dijawab oleh penceramah kita pada pagi ini dalam sesi soal jawab nanti. Tidak lupa juga, kita ada satu sesi kuis di mana penonton boleh cuba menjawab kuis yang telah disediakan oleh penceramah kita melalui link Google Form yang akan diberi bila-bila masa semasa program. Jadi tunggu ya. Hadiah menarik yang menanti pemenang-pemenang petuah kita ialah wang tunai sebanyak RM50 dan tiga helai t-shirt KML. T-shirt ini limited edition ya semua. Okey jadi jangan lepaskan peluang ini. Baiklah tanpa membuang masa saya perkenalkan penceramah kita pada pagi ini iaitu Encik Lim Se Kiam atau lebih mesra kita panggil sebagai Mr. Lim. Okey apa khabar Mr. Lim? Apa baik. Okey, terima kasih ya kerana sudi bersama kami warga Kolej Majulah Silabuan pada pagi ini. Okey, sebelum kita bercerita lebih lanjut tentang topik kita pada pagi ini, kita berkenalan sedikit dengan latar belakang pendidikan dan perkhidmatan Mr. Lim. Mr. Lim mendapat pendidikan dalam ijazah sarjana muda dalam bidang kejuruteraan pembuatan dan pengurusan di University of Dundee, United Kingdom. Beliau merupakan antara top students di universiti tersebut. Untuk pengetahuan hadirin juga, penceramah kita ini mempunyai pengalaman bekerja selama 24 tahun. Ya. Beliau pernah berkhidmat sebagai jurutera peralatan di sebuah syarikat multinasional di Knowles uh, Electronics Bayan lepas pada tahun 1997 sehingga tahun 2000 dan dari 2000 sehingga 2008 Beliau bekerja sebagai penasihat teknikal dan pengurus projek. Daripada tahun 2008 sehingga kini, beliau adalah pegawai perhubungan dan latihan industri di National Advanced IPv6 Center of Excellence di University Science Malaysia. Uh, satu fakta menarik yang saya rasa anda semua perlu tahu tentang ceramah kita adalah beliau merupakan antara pengasas Makers at USM iaitu sebuah komuniti yang bertujuan memberi peluang kepada pelajar dan staf USM untuk bersama-sama mempelajari teknologi baru serta mencipta idea merentasi pelbagai bidang. Wah hebat betul ya penceramah kita pada hari ini. Jadi tanpa melengahkan masa saya jemput Mr. Lim untuk berkongsi dengan penonton semua tentang topik kejuruteraan pembuatan. Dipersilakan. Very good morning. How are you doing? Ladies and gentlemen, are you in interested <laughs> to know further? Okay. Yes, I bet. Everyone is interested. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, a little bit about the uh, today's uh, topic, right? So, I hope that uh, at the end of the uh, this uh, session, we will gain some of the interest or create some culture that uh, we can work together uh, for furthering your studies to become the uh, manufacturing engineering and also the uh, you know uh, expert in this area as well okay so for this uh, session uh, um, about myself with uh, as uh, mentioned about i have 24 experience and uh, uh, it is good to know that the uh, 
I have uh, plenty of experience uh, in terms of the, uh, you know, uh, from the, as a service a provider, manufacturing engineers, and even the uh, consultant for the industry as well. So I hope that I can share a little bit about my experience and uh, uh, what I feel is suitable for the uh, younger generations that uh, can do better. So hopefully we can start now. Yes, sure. Okay, um, uh, if you are ready, then the, I should uh, start down with the topic of the, uh, this uh, session. I call this is a uh, building and engineering culture through creative making. So as you can see here on the right hand side, this is a logo that uh, makers at USM that uh, I founded um, in 2017. And the tagline for this uh, uh, makers at USM, all widely used is called the ideas worth making okay next so you can see in the picture on the left hand side actually i have uh, given the a lot of uh, talk uh, to the industries and even the uh, students uh, new students and enrolling to the uh, university science malaysia so i talk about the interest of the uh, making and we should do this because um, engineers are lacking uh, in this uh, century. Uh, so we should build this kind of culture, um, uh, should have a curiosity culture that uh, we should learn and we should make it happen. That is the most important thing. Okay, next. So what is actually a maker culture? So or we call this a maker movement. This is the things that uh, uh, my idea is that uh, making the students or staff or even the uh, retirees to, to build something tangible. So it's a physical part that uh, we should uh, make it happen. Um, then what we do, we should share the ideas and we learn together. Okay, there is no age limit. So we should experiment, we share, we discuss, we have to interact. So it will make it uh, more valuable and, you know, more encouraging. Because uh, if you make something, you should share the happiness with uh, your, your people, uh, our people uh, surrounding, because it's a community uh, benefit as well. Next. So the idea about the uh, maker's uh, uh, space is that the we should uh, uh, look at this uh, correct model that uh, happening across the world. Uh, actually, a lot of uh, college institutions, higher education, uh, they actually make this uh, space for their students as well. Because uh, we should create a, a place for them to do the brainstorming. I call this a thinking area. Then the, after mature enough um, the ideas, then we should plan to do the, uh, the model. So that's why we call modeling. So once you draft and design, and um, you should make it. If you don't make it, it's just a, a proposal. Okay, it won't make it happen. So that's why ideally I encourage uh, college institution should have this kind of space to give opportunity for the students to uh, do this work. Next. So of course, a uh, short uh, about the uh, vision and mission and objective. Of course, uh, uh, different uh, school, different uh, maker space, uh, they have uh, their different uh, ideas about their maker space. So what I uh, propose is that the, uh, we should have a cross-disciplinary uh, community, different schools joining together to, to make use of the space and uh, come up with the ideas and inspire everybody. So it is very good that uh, we can create the entrepreneurship out of it. Okay, next. So um, this is a whole idea about the uh, forming the uh, makers uh, uh, space in different different uh, school. Um, so different school, they have a uh, different expertise. So they come together, they share the ideas and make it happen because it's a cross disciplinary is very very important now nobody can work alone 
because if you work alone, it, 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 you just assume it, it won't happen, right? So we need expertise, we need experienced uh, people to help each other to make something uh, very, very interesting and helpful. So once uh, you have uh, something that uh, matured enough or good enough that the benefit people, then we can come together and uh, look for the angels or you know investor. Then uh, you, you can actually uh, start your your startup or even entrepreneurship. Right. Next. So currently we have uh, three zones of uh, maker space at the uh, University of Science Malaysia. All right. Thank you. Next. So of course uh, we have an industry partner in uh, Penang. Um, we have a. Uh, uh, multi uh, multinational company like uh, Intel, uh, local uh, established uh, company Vtrox is a machine vision builder, and we have a um, mission of uh, communication to, uh, under SKMM as well. Then uh, we have a uh, Japan uh, company Yamaha, uh, Huawei, even the local uh, uh, telco as well. Next, <coughs> so of course. Uh, this is a way that uh, we create uh, something then uh, we create uh, through the social media such as uh, Facebook, uh, we create a group uh, called Makers at USM. So we post the photos, we share the Makers uh, project, share your final year's uh, project, your second year's uh, ideas or something. Then uh, we can come together, group it and the, uh, we hope uh, we can contribute as a mentor uh, to, to make it the uh, better and of course most important thing make your ideas happen okay next so of course um, a lot of benefits at the uh, maker space ultimate aim is that the, you can be the professional you can be the expert and you you can start the, as a maker partnership right so there is no uh, right or wrong in the pathway that uh, you are going to take uh, as long as you do it, you are the expert of your subject matter. So it's very important, right? We never give up. We should, uh, you know, groom our ideas and make it happen, right? We can start small, okay? This is called call the culture and the interest that uh, you should groom it. Okay, next. So, of course, uh, when we talk, talk about the Maker Initiative, uh, actually, we come across that uh, the uh, worldwide, actually, all the higher education already uh, kickstart this uh, maker initiative. So, we should compare to the uh, international level that uh, what actually and uh, how they did it, right? So, we should uh, improve it uh, from the uh, current uh, setup. So, that's why we have to benchmark with, uh, 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 you know, the better... Uh, Makers uh, set up in the world. Next. So, you know, uh, 2014 at the uh, US, uh, actually the uh, president of the uh, United States of America uh, come together uh, to form uh, the Maker Nation Day. So, uh, they have uh, plenty of the uh, institutions uh, come together to come up with this uh, proposal to the President of the United States, uh, they call this a building a nation of makers. So university colleges are actually expanding this opportunity to make. That is uh, very important. Next. So of course, uh, there'll be a, a lot of lists. Uh, you can do it, uh, uh, read it yourself. You can do a small research. Okay, next. So in Malaysia, of course, uh, we have uh, this uh, started by the uh, MCMC under the Digital Lifestyles of Malaysia, uh, under the Maker Initiative. So Penang also, we have a Penang Science Cluster. So I hope that uh, in your lab one as well, uh, probably your college can be the first one to kickstart this uh, cluster, Maker's uh, Cluster as well, to groom the, uh, the students uh, to go into the engineering. Okay, so in uh, Kuala Lumpur, actually they have a uh, call this a uh, Kuala Lumpur Engineering Science Fair. That is a very very huge uh, fair. 
but um, before COVID, actually, I uh, every year participate in there. Um, you know, uh, we we show our projects. Uh, we share to the students, even the the senior citizens. Actually, what I uh, motivate me is that the uh, actually everybody want to learn. Just that uh, you don't have the opportunity to feel it, see it, because uh, everybody is talking about referring to the YouTube, referring to the Facebook, but they don't feel it. That's why the Kuala Lumpur Engineering Science Fair or our USM uh, Maker Fair, uh, actually we we let the people to, you know, to to look at it. Uh, they have a physical uh, touch on the products. So they can try it out and uh, they play around. So I was so uh, uh, proud that the uh, one of the senior citizens said, they, "Oh wow! Uh, they they bring their grandchildren and uh, grandchildren so excited. Then the uh, you know the grandma grandpa is so happy that uh, wow! I didn't I never see this uh, before. So interesting. So this these are the things that curiosity." The interest that should you should uh, maintain it in yourself so that's why you can learn and more and more and you have a more experience then you can come out something very interesting okay next so of course uh, for the maker fair uh, started uh, in the uh, US um, 2011 and they have a uh, so-called the uh, largest uh, festival uh, compared to the so-called circus uh, during the old old time, so what they do is that they they, they those uh, makers or DIY uh, people actually they they come out with their their products and showcase in the fair. So everybody is just uh, playing around and um, they, they they make um, you know people curious how they actually make it, what why they make it. That is the uh, things that uh, we should ask ourselves. Why? How come they can do it, right? So next, so the uh, Maker Fair actually uh, getting a lot, a lot of uh, interesting uh, response, and you know, um, they have uh, actually reached until the uh, Asia already. Uh, last I know is uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, Macau, and even China. So, so these are uh, country that actually uh, organize the uh, Maker Fairs and even the make mini Maker Fairs like Penang Island. Okay, next. So makers is not about just a making. So it can comprise of an industry, uh, hands-on science, robotics, crafting, uh, music, um, recycling. Yeah. So at, on the right hand side, you can see they actually they have a very big uh, maker fair. So they even zone it out. So what are the, the things that they can actually uh, buy the entry ticket? or they go into the uh, zone and uh, they have fun together right next so Penang Maker Fair 2016 that's how why I I have a motivation that uh, to form this uh, makers at USM so that's why I was so surprised that everybody is so interest interesting to know uh, things that uh, they build so things that I build <laughs> okay <laughs> next so you can see the uh, president of America is so busy, but they, they actually spend the days uh, together with uh, makers and the DIY uh, because uh, this is a very important uh, culture we should grow. If we don't do, we don't make it, then it won't happen. That's why he said that the, uh, today's uh, DIY is tomorrow's maker. Of course, a uh, maker America and makers of world, right? So next. So of course, uh, if you are interested to set up the maker space, these are the things that uh, you can uh, actually refer. Uh, open space that you can write uh, on the wall, uh, of course, a glass wall or, or the whiteboard. Okay, next. So this is a place that uh, just now I mentioned about the modeling. Next. So uh, in 2017, uh, we, we set up the uh, first uh, exhibition or maker fair uh, we we invited the all the students uh, come together and showcase their products and explain uh, to the public that uh, actually what actually they are building. So some of them actually uh, quite uh, interesting. They make the three uh, D printers uh, portable. 
and even the unlimited painting. So now only I saw in the Shopee as well, unlimited painting for the 3D printers, it costs about, about 4,500. Yeah, so in 2017, he actually created something like this. Okay, next. So the makerspace are visited by our um, MCMC, right? Next. So some of the pictures here are showing the uh, people explaining and the interest. And uh, in the middle, the pictures that I'm uh, actually explaining to the our vice chancellor about uh, upcycling using the bottles and uh, uh, do the planting as well, right? Next. So visitors. Projects and you can see at the bottom, uh, bottom uh, uh, left, this is a uh, 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 staff uh, in USM retired already. Uh, actually, he is the uh, one that uh, managing the uh, glass blowing. I'm not so sure your college uh, actually have this uh, department uh, for this uh, glass blowing. No, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's a uh, very interesting uh, skill. He is a professional in uh, glass blowing. Uh, actually, too bad uh, he retired already. So I still uh, asking him uh, to help me to go for exhibition and showcase how he actually do the the glass instrument. So how how this uh, they can use it for the chemicals and the science. Next. So these are the participants and the uh, childrens are having fun together. Next. Okay. So we built something, then the uh, football uh, with uh, robots, and uh, uh, this is an interesting thing that we should we should build next. Okay, even uh, we have uh, started the uh, uni makers for the uh, university level. Um, next. Okay, so the competitions. Uh, I when I post the uh, ideas about uh, makers, actually. That day, uh, that time, uh, two thousand eighteen, uh, a group of uh, students actually come uh, using the uh, machine vision, uh, using the drone to monitor the uh, plants. So actually, they actually, uh, what I say is that um, they got the first prize, uh, grand prize, uh, for the national uh, level. Yeah, next. So of course, uh, we have our uh, makers uh, workshops. You can uh, see next. Okay, of course. Uh, uh, when we talk about makers, uh, makers, of course, uh, a lot of things that uh, we can start with. Not necessarily we talk about the big machines. Uh, you should build, right? So if if you look at the left hand side, is uh, about the craft. I believe a lot of people like to do something. You know, make the beer and uh, work it and. And uh, even some of them, they sell it online. I believe uh, in the US, actually, one of the kids uh, about 11 or 12 years old, actually, he, he do something, then he sell it, and uh, uh, actually, he's a millionaire now. <laughs> wow. So, wow. science and uh, fun, actually, science uh, actually is a fun for everybody because uh, you never know, we never test, we never feel. Then uh, we come up with something. Wow! Everybody is so surprised, and uh, you know, you know something that you you see is totally different from what you you read from the books, right? So makers, we should, you know, uh, as a my advice to the younger uh, uh, students that uh, when you go into the engineering, actually you have a uh, plenty of uh, things that uh, you can learn. Uh, you have to have a uh, logic thinking. You need to have a uh, you know curiosity. You need to have the interest uh, to make things. So uh, you know there are plenty of people, so experienced people actually would like to help you, right? It's just that uh, you should say it out. If you don't say it out, uh, I don't think anybody, uh, you know, can help you, right? Next. <laughs> so you can see. Um, Physics is theoretical, but the fun is real. So I, I think uh, a lot of, uh, uh, I think your foundation uh, students, actually they learn about physics, right? So they have a, a fundamental of physics. So physics is fun. So if you look at the right hand side, 
uh, have you ever think about is it possible use a pencil and poke through the uh, uh, you know plastics of a uh, fill with uh, water why why it not leak you should think about why how come it can it can work right if you poke something of course the water will leak but it won't why right so <clears throat> the middle picture it shows that the lemon actually can uh, produce its electricity if you connect it in the series right of course the uh, makers is not about you know simple things every every complicated thing start with a simple step so it can go to the next uh, level next picture of course uh, right now um we will talk about the uh, people uh, uh is a uh, no more no more people working in the uh, grocery as well so amazon actually using the machine visions and they call this uh, internet of things they put up a lot of sensors and camera to analyze the uh, the picture of the actions of the people then actually they can use a uh, facial recognition and identity and they just uh, take the things and uh, go out from the store then automatically will deduct from the uh, accounts as well so it's a cashless and also the uh, people uh, cashier no longer needed yeah so it's a very advanced things everything start with a culture of a maker next so of course uh, you can see the left hand side the uh, robots uh, become part this is a person that uh, i met in the Kuala Lumpur engineering science fair actually he make a living by building the uh, uh, display robots and uh, it has been successful for 10 years uh, since he started. Everybody eng engaged him to display the, uh, this kind of uh, upcycling robots and, and put it up at the, in front of their stores to attract people. So actually, no need to invest a lot of things, but the most important is you make it. So when we talk about just special uh, world, actually now people using the automatic uh, tractors and also the drones um, to 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 make a, a so-called automatic uh, um, farm, um, automatic uh, robotics farming. So you no longer need to go outside and uh, you just uh, remotely uh, control everything you want to plant up to, uh, you know, you have to, they have to, uh, they have a machine visions that uh, actually identify your, your physical uh, contour of your uh, farmland as well then they know where to actually put the seeds okay food security uh, I believe uh, very important now um, if you realize that uh, right right now uh, COVID happens then a lot of uh, even the wet market actually goes down so in Penang I don't know where to find a uh, uh, fresh uh, uh, you know wet food and I need to buy everything is buying online uh, under the frozen food so food security is very important so we should think about a way of uh, you know uh, everybody should uh, start at home uh, start planting and also you you will be surprised um, planting is not that easy okay next so of course a uh, glass blowing uh, glass art i think uh, in the supermarket you can see this type of uh, glassware uh, with uh, arts i believe it's very very expensive I know uh, I visited the Singapore uh, the display in the uh, cabinet. It cost about at least uh, starting from a three hundred sing dollar for a, a, a display like this. Okay, so mechanical art and design. So what I'm trying to say is that mechanical uh, design uh, is very important. Um, I just uh, quote you a very simple one. It's called the uh, uh, skin peeler. Um, you know your fruit your apple you peel it off it's purely mechanical so that's why why i say that uh, no need to to go uh, to the uh, very advanced uh, level comprising the uh, uh, electronics you know, everything everything can be done uh, soft by mechanical design so another very advanced uh, feature is that the uh, bicycle i think uh, everybody uh, had experience of uh, you know uh, riding the bicycles right bicycle is actually a mechanical design that uh, you can soft 
uh, and go to your destination okay so next so of course the mechanical part the cost is uh, automata uh, actually no tools no glue so actually when you do then it can work okay simple right so next so of course uh, you know air bonsai and why why it can float in the air right are you curious about how they do it why it, it, won't, it won't fly away right it stayed steady at the same place so at the bottom did you know that uh, this guy david uh, actually uh, built this uh, uh, bottle of uh, plants in 1972 it, it, it no need to do the watering anymore it's a uh, small versions of the uh, earth okay so you, you you should think about how actually you can do it right next So of course, uh, there are plenty of uh, opportunities, uh, even the uh, wood and the plants. Actually, you can see at the bottom there, actually this guy is uh, using the apple tree and shape it as uh, like a chair. So in UK, this guy's uh, uh, ideas actually been uh, ordered by people. Two, at least uh, two, three years uh, orders. You have to queue. Right? So next. Uh, next please so next uh, topic i'm going to share is about the upcycling and uh, you know uh, we should uh, start something uh, making culture that uh, you can look around and uh, make it uh, start okay next uh, okay uh, 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 uh. yeah so these are the reference books before that you, can, you continue uh, with, with upcycling Yes. Okay. Uh, can I just remind our uh, audience that we have uh, our Google form, okay, about your quiz just now. Okay. All right. So kepada penonton semua, uh, kita ada sediakan link Google form. Okay. Itu uh, adalah quiz yang disediakan oleh Mr. Lim sendiri Alright uh, So para peserta boleh mencuba menjawab quiz tersebut Untuk berpeluang menangi hadiah yang menarik Okay Pemenang yang uh, pemenang quiz akan diumumkan di akhir slot ni Alright so saya yakin semua tak sabar lagi untuk mendengar perkongsian yang lebih lanjut Jadi saya serahkan semula kepada Mr. Lim Okay uh, thank you very much Shakila um like to continue my topics <clears throat> so uh if you you have a chance uh, you can actually uh, refer to this type of uh, books actually very interesting that uh, you know how people start up with a maker movement and on the right hand side is a fintech uh, actually you can venture into as well it's a financial technology they call fintech okay next okay I think I will go to the uh, next uh, topic on the upcycling. Next. Okay, if anybody want to join this uh, makers at USM, uh, you can actually prompt me, then the, I can uh, put you all in the group. Thank you. Next. Okay, so um, now I'm talking about the upcycling. So upcycling, I feel that uh, I, I need to stress on this as well. Um, you know, nowadays uh, people throwing a lot of uh, parts to the uh, waste, um, they never reuse it. So it's a very serious problem right now. Even the uh, trash is uh, building a bigger continents than the uh, south america now the rubbish so it's floating uh, around the oceans so it's uh, scary so so that's why uh, i need to share this uh, upcycling of course you will be curious what is it going to relate to my uh, studies 
on the uh, fundamental of engineering. So that is a uh, very in interesting uh, things that uh, you should uh, relate to this because uh, like just now one uh, I think uh, a few minutes ago I shared about the uh, um, you need to some start something small, right? So if you don't have uh, enough money, so if you want to do something but you you don't have a raw materials, what, where are you going to find, right? Actually, in the uh, local community, uh, you can not if you notice uh, there's a lot of uh, recycling uh, uh, plants and uh, something that uh, you you collect then you, know, you sell sell to them or you 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 give to somebody else even the the cloth. Uh, you know the baju and all these things. Uh, actually, you can make something out of it, right? So next. So um, what am I going to ask you? Is that the uh, do you know what is upcycling? Okay, what do you do with uh, upcycling? So right now, a lot of uh, countries like uh, Japan, the Europe, they are going to talk about the zero waste. So what is zero waste? Right. So, I, I, I don't know, uh, to me it's very important, that's why I share it today. Next. So, if you can see outside of our you know, school and all this, we call this Gita Samula. I think a few years ago, this is very important and uh, you can see a lot of place, uh, they put up this uh, recycle bin. So, this is called, so called the recycle. But what about upcycling? Any ideas about upcycling or not, right? So, upcycling is about the process, reuse, you know, your, your, your things that, uh, you know, re redo, make it upgrade to the next uh, uh, useful things. So, uh, to me, upcycling is very interesting. You should uh, look at the uh, examples that I'm going to share later on. Okay, next. Okay, so um, just a, a simple question is it uh, probably maybe you can prompt a message uh, asking uh, or, or giving the, the input. Uh, what do you think about upcycling? What is upcycling? No? Shakira, maybe, maybe they can put up the comments uh, in uh, YouTube, right? So maybe they can input uh, what do you think about upcycling? What is upcycling? Okay, so para penonton kita, uh, Mr. Lim tanya, apa anda tahu tentang upcycling tu? Jadi anda boleh kongsikan di ruangan komen YouTube kita. If anybody reply, uh, you just uh, let me know. Okay, Thank you me. shall continue to the slides, sir. Maaf ni semua kita ada masalah teknikal sedikit. So anybody uh, actually reply on the upcycling? Okay. Um, oh, they lost already. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they are still there, I think. <laughs> yeah, so what is upcycling and why do I do why do I uh, want to do it? So, yeah. Okay, so kita cuba baca komen-komen di YouTube. Okay, so ada yang rasa yang upcycling is a creative reuse of wastes and materials. Okay? Yes. Okay, so betul ya jawapan tu, Mr. Lim? Yeah, the high quality yes. products. Yeah. Dan ada juga okay. jawapan daripada saudari Saudatul Adawiyah, iaitu upcycling is build a high quality product. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to share the uh, things that the uh, next uh, slides are uh, reused. Oh, it's such a way to create a high quality product. Yeah, yes, yes, okay. yes. 
So the third one is reuse. Yeah. You discarded right. objects or materials in such a way as to create a product of higher quality or value than the original. True. True. So basically all these answers are correct, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Then do we have any answer? Uh, there's some more. Reimagining and repurposing waste materials into a much more useful functions. Yes, yes. Okay, so I am uh, going to ask another one, uh, if allowed, uh, uh, Shakira. Yeah, yeah, so, sure, sure. Um, what is going to relate you to the uh, engineering with uh, upcycling? Mm. Okay, right. so penonton kita boleh cuba jawab soalan Mr. Lim tadi. Apa yang akan relatekan upcycling dengan uh, engineering ni? Macam mana kita boleh relatekan dia? Okay, how can we relate uh, upcycling and engineering? Okay, masih tak, masih tak ada yang mencuba lagi. Yeah. No problem, we can uh, go to the slides if, uh, you know, the slide is ready. Yeah, we're having some uh, some trouble with that for now. So, uh, okay. we'll continue with the questions. Can we? Yes, sure. Okay. So, that's a uh, safe to be a better quality. And after some... Okay. So, that one so is... this is okay. the, yes. Yeah. Recycle yeah, okay. versus uh, upcycle. So um, we what we do is that uh, we make the waste product repurpose it into the uh, next uh, usage. So for recycle, it's just that you once you you know finish up your bottles, you just uh, throw it into the rubbish bin. So after that, you don't you don't have any purpose, right? Then the recycler will use the bottle and they just uh, melt it and uh, they they reproduce something else right so actually we can actually reuse repurpose the waste materials that is called the uh, upcycling okay next so um uh, i i saw the uh answers of from uh, one of the guys uh, the reply is that the uh, um you know uh, these are the things that uh, it have a serious impact to the environment that's why we have to repurpose the waste. So not everything is just uh, throw it and uh, let the kerajaan and uh, solve the problem, right? So next. Uh, so probably can play this uh, video. Up a hill. Recycling, something to do with recycling. I'm just not too sure what the up bit means. Uh, I have a vague idea of what upcycling is, yeah. No. I don't really know. No, what is upcycling? <laughs> And I run the Autism School Club, which is the space here, and um, is a creative space for people to come and learn skills, um, make their own things, make their own creations, and share experiences with other like-minded people. The term upcycling is quite broad. Um, for me, upcycling is to take an old piece and either by transforming or changing or adding or removing pieces to make into some I'm really passionate about sort of creative things. Um, so when I had my, my first son, um, I started doing things from home and sewing projects. I invited my mummy friends. We hired babysitters. We were doing sewing at home and it started from there. And then I decided to find a place and doing it properly and, and create this space, which is fantastic for people to come here and do their, their own projects. There is a there is a very big 
um, upcycling movement at the moment uh, really big. It's actually really good for people to see what they can achieve. Um, people might be a little bit overwhelmed by the fact that, oh, I don't know how to transform a bath into a sofa, or I don't know how to make a copper pipe into a lampshade. So you can start very little, you can start with very little skills, you can start with very small projects. So for example, painting furniture is a really easy, not easy, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy way to start if you want to start upcycling. Um, Reupholstering as well is another easy way to start upcycling. Um, you don't have to buy expensive things or make something really funky to become an upcycler. You can start with plastic, you can start with fabric, you can do pieces of wood, you can do wooden pallets. Um, there are lots of things out there that you can actually use for upcycling and you don't have to have a massive space or you don't have to be really important or really famous to, to do upcycling. You can really contribute to the upcycling world in a very small way and from there you can just get growing and, and make something bigger and better. You can actually uh, follow these ideas and uh, you know, start up uh, in the school. So I believe uh, in college we can actually you know, come up with a small things and uh, take part on this project. My name is Joe Goldstein and I upcycle bicycles or bicycle components into art or sculptures. I've always been into bikes but I'd say over the last 10 years um, I focused on restoring bikes and that has developed into making art out of bicycles now. Um, so I'd say maybe seven years in total. I wasn't always uh, financially able to get what I wanted but I've always uh, you know, appreciated the, the older aesthetics of, of cycling or the older parts of bikes. Working in London and being an upcyclist in London is, is key for the success of Bespoke Spokes. I never conceptualise any of the pieces of art that I make, um, more so the pieces, not, not necessarily speak to me, but they kind of give me an idea when I'm looking at them and I'm taking them apart. I just literally go, hmm, I think that will work well with that, and that's what makes, that's what makes my art into my art, really. I think my, my most pride possession in terms of what I've done upcycling with has to be Ruby Cranks here. Um, she was one of my favourite pieces, utilised a whole range of um, really old components, all of which came from the same bicycle. So this, this was a real labour of love. It did take me about three days to put together. Um, and I, I'd say definitely this is my, my favourite piece. I think the amount of markets that are catering for upcyclists and people that do their own creative work at home and then want to sell it out, in, out in any marketplace, whether it's actually markets or online, I think London does give you one of the best opportunities in, in Britain to, to actually achieve that. But the flip side of the coin of that is that um, everything is at a premium. I see a lot of people buying stuff with a, with a mind's view of what they want out of that, but it not being what that is at the first stage. Um, and people want to express their creativity, and I think as we go forward, the, the drive to do that will, will push upcycling into, into a new realm, one that hopefully I'll make some money from. <laughs> So, um, of course, uh, I'm going to skip this uh, a lot of, uh, you know, information that uh, you can uh, refer it. Uh, yeah, probably you do a research on the Google and all these things, uh, you will know it better. Okay, next. Uh, we skip this. Next. Okay, now we talk about the linear economy and circular economy. So when you talk about the uh, design, uh, manufacturing process uh, now you should rethink back about the upside thing because when you build some things um, then uh, you, you can see on the left hand side uh, uh, pictures that they show you that you produce then they take they make or uh, dispose of then you become a waste only so the next one uh, is talking about the upside thing uh, uh, that uh, we should uh, implant inside our mind uh, when we as an engineer we produce something we make something we manufacture something we should rethink it back in the circle you make it you consume it and you enrich it or you re return it back to the manufacturer then the manufacturer will re rebuild and redo or to become the next uh, product so it will become the ideas of so-called minimize the waste and we call this is called zero waste okay next 
So this is very important uh, as uh, you become the engineers. When you design something, you have to think about the way, how about after they use it, um, is it going to be done inside the uh, dust uh, bin or it come back to the manufacturer and repurpose it back. Okay, so this is very important that why I need to share uh, upcycling is important. You have a curiosity, you have the interest to build something, then after that, what about the waste? You have to think it back, right? So that's why it's very important as an engineer, when you build something, you have to think about the community and the environment. Okay, next. Okay, of course, uh, you can uh, see this uh, in uh, Google. Next. Next, this talking about the zero waste and repurpose. Okay, yeah, so a lot of uh, companies actually, uh, they do this practice, this uh, Unilever is one of the top uh, leader in this. Next. Okay, next, people waste a lot. So if you can see here, the product that actually maybe you experienced and seen before, you know, the leather, it will only decompose 50 years. Have you ever think about other products that it, it only decompose a couple of hundreds of years? Right, that is a very sad thing. You look at the, uh, the bottom left, the fishing line. Look at it, 600 years. You know, they just, uh, you know, when people fishing, uh, the putus, the line, so actually they go into the ocean. Can you imagine it takes 600 years? Now how many people people in this planet? If 10% of the population do it, you think what happened to the oceans? It's really seriously bad. Next. So if you look at the, uh, you know, the diaper can you imagine for under 50 years the bottle of course a uh, bottle is a uh, is uh, from silica a uh, glass bottle is from silica it, it will take a million years uh, of course to decompose okay next okay so we encourage uh, engineers uh, to have a concept of a uh, um, uh, heart of uh, making products uh, can contribute to the zero waste. Next. So if you want to play this uh, video, if the time's allowed. In this small Japanese town, residents take the concept of recycling very seriously. Aluminum, steel, spray, pet bottle cap. They separate their trash into a whopping 34 categories. Welcome to Kamikatsu, Japan, the zero waste town. Hatsui Katayama diligently separates her waste according to Kamikatsu's rigorous zero waste program. In the very beginning, so Kamikatsu was doing it open incineration, but people could see that's really hurting the environment at the same time the health of the people, so zero waste was created. Since the program began in 2003, 80% of the town's garbage gets recycled, reused or composted. The rest goes to a landfill, but by 2020 the goal is to be 100% zero waste. <laughs> これも皆でっこに持っていってます。針根がこっち。スチールが、スチールがこちらです。それでここがガラス類。
まあ、分別も大変やけどもあのカンカンにしても全部中を洗ってあの処分せないといけないっていうのも大変やし面倒くさいし、まあ、最初これがちょっと抵抗がありました。It's been very tough in the way to gain the、uh, understanding of the people. Of course, when they had to separate garbage into 34 categories, which is massive, it's really like just tough. Residents must wash, clean, sort, and then bring all of the materials to the city's recycling center, where monitors such as Kazuyuki Kiyohara make sure it's being done properly. あとまあ分別も、えーまあ、みんながみんな完璧にできるわけではないのでいろんなものが混ざったものとかを、えー、分けたりするのが結構大変ですね。Signs on each of the bins tell consumers what their trash will be recycled into and how much that process can cost or earn the community. The town has what's known as a kuru kuru shop, meaning circular. Where residents can bring in and take used items for free. There's also a factory where local women make products out of discarded items. We had、uh, lots of like old kimonos or the old clothes or these flags not used anymore. So we asked all these grannies who really had the skills for the sewing. Then they made it into a craft like teddy bears or bags or what I'm wearing right now as well. It's made out of all these、uh, fish flags that we celebrate. And then use it for the Children's Day. Businesses all over Kamikatsu have incorporated ways to become zero waste. We are cutting by doing the recycling the cost、um, into one third compared to when we actually burn everything. We are trying to focus more in how can we change our lifestyles to not to produce any waste. Even in this small town with only 1,700 people, everyone l o o k at each other and they look after or take care of each other. So, this kind of supporting system within the community really helped for the implementation of the zero waste. Let us know if you have any unique tips for reducing your environmental impact in the comments below and be sure to check out this next episode. Two years of trash in this tiny little jar. My values are having a really low environmental impact. I have to live like I want that. And so that's why I decided to change my lifestyle. Thanks for watching Seeker Stories. Please subscribe to see new videos every week. Okay, thank you, Max.、Uh... We are running out of time, I think. Okay, so、uh, we encourage you to do this、uh, 3 hour reuse, reduce, recycle, and repurpose as well. Okay, next. So these are the examples、uh, you can actually、uh, do a simple research and actually repurpose of the waste、uh, things. Okay, next. So it's very interesting, right? So before and after, you see. Next. See, what can you do with the bottles? Right? Next. So we skip this. Skip this. So, of course,、uh, I've done the, these uh, competitions uh, of, uh, probably next. If you like to do this,、uh, let me know. We can do something on this as well. Next. So, the office also you can、uh, actually convert into something、uh, interesting. For agriculture as well,、uh, you can see the model. So, you know, the design is not,、uh, look at it, it's very simple, but、uh, actually you can do a lot of、uh, improving as well. Okay, next. So, for a, a smart city, Actually, you can refer this model, it's very interesting.、Uh, permaculture, farming, growth street, pollution, remediation, and、uh, waste to energy. So, this is、uh, 
even the uh, simple logic uh, it can uh, repurpose and uh, make um, this contribute to the smart city as well so it's not about the low tech high tech things it's just about the ideas and make it happen right engineering we should have this kind of uh, uh, curiosity to, to make things happen so don't keep your idea you share your ideas and uh, we we hope to work together and make it work next so we, you know for healthcare you can actually repurpose the the plastic to the chairs it will be it will become the uh, uh wheelchairs as well right it's not the expensive uh, parts as well next so even the water management energy management waste management uh, this type of uh, apps uh, you produce integrate with uh, engineering the uh, staff or robotics and all this it, it, it can it can happen right next okay next so these are the even the you can reuse a newspaper and uh, put it as a box as well so of course i have the videos about how to produce this uh, uh, box uh, you know how to fold the newspaper become the box so uh, i'm not so sure shakila do you have uh, still the time uh we have we have like two minutes more yeah so i think the uh, the two videos uh, later on uh, are you going to play during the q a session uh, maybe they can actually watch it yeah uh, we'll play it during the quiz session where you will be choosing the winners so we'll play it during mm -hmm. that time yeah okay so i think uh, these are the things that uh, i finish up the uh, 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 this uh, presentation so the two more videos i think uh, you can play it uh, later on uh, when they look at it uh, one video is talking about the origami uh, how you fold the uh, news, newspaper and uh, become the box okay so the uh, final video is talking about diy uh, wheelchair so actually you can use the uh, you no know, uh, uh, recycling parts and uh, make it uh, as a wheelchair you, the video will show you how to do it so i think um, um, you can go to the um, conclusions is that the um, to become an engineering uh, students we of course need to do something that uh, uh, considering the environment consider the community um, uh, we, we 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 should uh, start up uh, with ideas and uh, you know we brainstorm in the group and is it uh, feasible uh, is it workable if why not uh, workable then uh, we should uh, you know come up with a solution or something that uh, improvise it then uh, if you don't have uh, enough knowledge that's a reason why you need to study right to gain the knowledge to, to have a hands-on and once you have this uh, knowledge and skill then you can you can work it right so that is how the foundations uh, uh, students that uh, should build curious uh, generate the ideas today you feel you want to make something come we work together as a group right so we, we, we of course we need to consider the ways and all these things like what i see about the upside thing so that's how uh, we can uh, start with the uh, engineering foundation there is a lot of things that you can study when, when you talk about manufacturing engineering it covers a lot of industries that is not only limited to one industry toy toy industry you know craft crafting industry this needs automations even the agriculture so we, manufacturing engineering can venture into many many areas so um, it can you it can be the analy analytics experts uh, you can be the um, uh, automation experts process improvement manufacturing is about um, process improvement then how you improve the use how you how you redesign the things to to make uh, the product uh, more useful uh, more purpose and the impact to the environment as well so i guess uh, this is what i'm trying to say 
I hope that this will encourage you to further your study into the uh, manufacturing engineering and even uh, other expertise as well. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Liu. Sangat menarik ya tadi kita dapat macam-macam benda kita tahu. Kita ada banyak info menarik mengenai makers at USM. Okay, so tadi Mr. Lim ada kongsikan juga ya. Ada beberapa lama web berkaitan maker seperti Maker Lab, Notes Maker, uh, Penang Science Cluster dan Mr. Lim ada juga kongsikan FB Group untuk makers at USM. Jadi, peserta program yang berminat untuk uh, mengetahui lebih lanjut boleh join FB Group tersebut. Dan tadi kita ada juga belajar, uh, kita ada juga uh, Tahu something about upcycling. Saya sendiri pun tak tahu juga sebelum ni. Okay. Yang mana benda-benda yang simple saja kita boleh tukarkan kepada something yang valuable. Okay. And kita ada juga, uh, misalnya ada juga tunjukkan kita video mengenai Zero Waste Town iaitu Kamikatsu Japan. Okay. Hopefully kita di Malaysia boleh juga okay, cuba untuk menjadi Kamikatsu Town tu. Alright, jadi sekarang uh, kita akan teruskan kepada sesi soal jawab. Okay, jadi saya akan bacakan beberapa soalan yang dikemukakan oleh penonton-penonton kita kepada Mr. Lim. Okay, so Mr. Lim, ada satu soalan daripada saudari Umi Kalsum. So, any interesting upcycling projects from the makers at USM? Can you care to explain? Yes, um, actually I myself and a group of uh, staff actually uh, repurpose the uh, plastic bottles into the vertical farming. So vertical farming, of course, uh, you know, uh, you can actually hang the bottles uh, upside down or the uh, in the horizontal way. Then we design a way of uh, using the, uh, you know, even the uh, wastewater from the aircons uh, 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 pipe, then actually they drip into the uh, vertical uh, bottles uh, stacking as well. So that's why it, it will become a uh, very interesting uh, uh, things that uh, we we reuse the waste and uh, we come up, uh, you know, the plants is so uh, healthy uh, because um, of this uh, design. Yeah, so of course uh, we do have other design as well, uh, like uh, 3D printers are uh, uh, building block uh, by the uh, you know with uh, wooden wooden stocks. Then they uh, redesigned it uh, to become the 3D printer as well. They use uh, even the uh, you know last time the DVD players. Uh, actually, they they use the uh, the parts inside and the uh, the they built so called the uh, DIY 3D printer. Okay, menarik. Vertical farming, okay. Dan dia ada YPU di printer tu. Okay, jadi saya akan bacakan soalan seterusnya. Are, the, uh, are there any places in Malaysia that practice zero waste as well? I think uh, Labon should start first. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, easier to manage uh, if uh, you start uh, from your, your place as well. Uh, we try to uh, do it, uh, but the thing is, uh, you know, the waste that the people generate is faster than uh, what you can uh, process as well. So what we uh, need to do is uh, we have to culture people uh, to start with this uh, attitude. If not, uh, it's getting uh, worse. Okay? Okay. So next question, Mr. Lim, how to know more about your maker group info? Would like to know further more. Yeah, of course, uh, you can join uh, my uh, makers uh, USM group or I will create another group uh, with your loved one uh, college as well. Uh, we can, we can, we can uh, share more. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then we we have another question. Yeah, good uh, idea. Makers, makers at KML. Oh, okay. This is not a question. This is a statement. <laughs> okay. Hopefully, we can make yeah. makers at KML. Yeah, I think uh, Shakila and the team uh, and your your principal can uh, think about uh, creating a space. Then uh, your students uh, will be very interesting to start. Right. Right now, I I yes. believe uh, they are motivated already. <laughs> Okay, so uh, here is a question from Miss Tunisia. If you don't mind, could you please share your experience or challenge working as an engineer? 
Yeah, um, uh, interesting questions. Uh, I once I work in the uh, factory as well. Um, the most uh, challenging things is the uh, teamwork, and uh, the culture. You know, uh, uh, working together. Uh, knowledge, of course, uh, you already have uh, experience. You are building it up. Uh, I believe uh, the most challenging things is uh, people. Okay, people. Um, they have to. To be open-minded and be uh, willing to share and the thing is uh, try not to create the uh, environment uh, with politics so it will create a lot of problems so it will it will kill off your uh, interest as a uh, professional engineers because uh, you no longer uh, have the interest to, to build something but you have to counter the politics of a working environment that is a uh, uh, worst case, uh, you know, as a uh, working, working, yeah, that is challenging. Okay, uh, so uh, next question: How competitive is the job market in manufacturing engineering in Malaysia? Yeah, that's as very I mentioned before, manufacturing engineering it can go to various industry, not necessarily in uh, um, manufacturing. Uh, it can go to you know, toy industry agriculture industries and uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, job opportunities there so it's just that the uh, you know uh, manufacturing engineer you may major into certain areas such as the uh, automations robotics process uh, um, engineer yeah equipment design so so there's a, a lot of uh, opportunities it's just that uh, you should gain a certain expertise in uh, certain areas. So, of course, you must have your uh, interest to, to, to become engineers. So it's not because of somebody forced you to become an engineer. Okay? Okay, I think that answers the question. Okay, so uh, there's another question. From Mr. Lim's opinion, is it possible for Malaysia to practice the upcycling and become a zero-waste country in the future? Yes, of course. Uh, if, let's say, a uh, session like this, uh, we share more to the people, right? So we create a kind of awareness. So zero-waste or the upcycling is not by only one person, right? So you need to have a group of people with uh, this kind of ideas, uh, willing to work together, then only it will happen. So if let's say, um, you know, you don't create this kind of culture, uh, when you when you repurpose or upcycling something, but other people throwing very fast because nowadays everybody stay at home and uh, you know they order online. Then the food waste is a lot plastic containers and all these things are coming to, to to your home so i believe everybody throwing a lot of uh, you know plastics uh, into the bin yeah so start from so, uh, from us and yeah, so all in all we need to will to uh, we have need, uh, we need to have a willing to change our attitude first isn't it yes yes okay so there is another question is there any future plan regarding assorting waste more conveniently in Malaysia? before this we have uh, reused the yes. box reuse recycle yes. right? so the kita semula uh, initiative i think few years ago by the government actually is a kickstart of the uh i know recycling and also upcycling the things but the thing is right now i i feel to my opinion is not uh, anybody's uh, opinion because uh, this is the attitude of individuals if they they, they look at the, the bin the recycling bin why should i care why should i <laughs> you know segregate the uh, the waste it's not my my job uh, everybody think that is uh, you know local government uh, uh, they need to do so it is not right. It is yourself actually should uh, you know separate up the waste. If plastic, then it's plastic. Uh, uh, papers is uh, about papers. You look at the uh, Japan uh, just now the videos. It shows that the uh, uh, the township uh, people they work together and they separate the waste. Then they pass to the recycling uh, uh, organization. It will help them 
and you help everybody in your town. So just like our, one of our viewers said that we need to reuse, reduce, recycle and educate. I think that is very important. Yes, yes, yes. So I hope this uh, session will benefit you all and also uh, create a kind of uh, awareness for, for you know, uh, attendees uh, for this uh, session. Because I have uh, shared uh, uh, a few uh, sessions before, I hope uh, we can create something and uh, motivate people to do this. Okay, so I think this is our last question. Uh, does upcycling expensive? Is it expensive? Uh, no, not really. Uh, actually, it's uh, from your waste or even your, you know, your community. Uh, what, what you can see at the around your community what actually um, nearby town or something the most of the parts that uh, they just uh, uh, throw away then you can come out and uh, collect uh, the waste and uh, repurpose it uh, and I, I think it, it, it can work because uh, even the the Caillou waste and all these things and the plastic uh, chairs actually can can uh, do it you can uh, repurpose like uh, just now when I mentioned about the DIY wheelchair or even the, uh, I, I didn't share the video for the DIY uh, gravity lights as well. Okay. Yeah, so it's not really expensive, right? Because we can start with something simple like bottle, mm -hmm. like chair, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so we have then another we... question. This is very yeah. in, uh, interesting. Okay, so this will be our last question. Okay, Mr. Lim? No problem, no problem. Yeah. Okay, so how much did it cost in terms of money and time for makers at USM to be founded in the very beginning? Wow. Yeah, I uh, actually uh, gained uh, uh, support uh, from the uh, ministry uh, department. Um, actually, uh, they put up the uh, about 50,000 uh, to you know, uh, buy a fundamental uh, equipment such as tools. Um, you know, screwdrivers and uh, all the uh, basic machining tools. Actually, from there, it's not uh, much. Uh, it can it can start uh, small, and once you 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 have uh, uh, things that uh, probably you can sell online, then you can uh, gain the 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 fund. Uh, you see, you build it up. So what I I encourage is that the uh, if you're talking about the college, uh, I think. First of all, you need a space. Then if, let's say, uh, a simple uh, machining tools or machining machines, uh, then uh, maybe maybe set up a time uh, for the students uh, to use it. Um, then then the, you, you, you just uh, reuse uh, whatever you have, then the costing will be very, very low. So it's just that uh, students should have um, the opportunities and uh, willing to to have uh, the ideas uh, to make things happen. If uh, even you set up, uh, you don't use it, also a waste. Okay, so we we, we need to have a more uh, curious uh, students. Uh, they are willing to share the ideas and and communicate uh, to people. It I I think nowadays uh, I I feel. Uh, is a bit hard. Uh, I, I, I wonder why the students uh, they don't uh, communicate uh, too much now. So uh, I feel that uh, we should uh, move away from uh, using the uh, mobile phones a lot because everybody clicking uh, in a short uh, message, you uh, uh, whatever, but uh, in actual communication, you will have a problem. Okay. All right, so I think that answers the questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lim, for explaining all the questions. Okay, saya harap uh, semua sudah jelas, ya. Okay, sekarang, Mr. Lim akan memilih jawapan yang terbaik untuk short quiz yang kami telah berikan sebentar tadi. Jadi, sementara itu, kita akan tayangkan semua beberapa video berkaitan kecuruturaan pembuatan untuk tontonan hari sekalian. Jadi, kita akan kembali bersiaran semua. As a part of BYU semua. Capstone, we came to together as a team and we've created OS wheelchair and it's an open source wheelchair that can be purchased from materials online shipped to your home and then assembled quite simply the total cost is under $400 and it weighs under 24 pounds and can easily fit in the back of a sedan trunk 
Other motorized wheelchairs are extremely expensive, thousands of dollars. Uh, this is very different. Our model here is to make something very affordable so that any family can afford it. The team met with the Jensen family um, to find out what their children needed and figured out what types of features they would like. The wheelchair that they developed is really great. It's low cost, it's really lightweight. Uh, most wheelchairs are really heavy, so getting them up and down stairs or in and out of a car is almost impossible to do. Having a medically needy child or children is very expensive and it's just neat to have something affordable that can make a difference in a child's life that just wants to be a kid, you know, just wants to have the mobility every other child has. The frame is actually made out of PVC. It is able to expand size with the child. So all of the joints will stay in the same spot and as the child grows, you can cut different lengths of PVC to increase the wheelchair size. We would love to see this also available to anyone around the world. The, the design is such that this could be easily manufactured in developing countries. The most rewarding part of this project was seeing Tanner sit in a wheelchair and recognize this could give him the opportunity to zip around freely in the classroom outside and to be more mobile. Our hope is that this project will be able to touch many families' lives. The ability to have a motorized wheelchair in the home that's lightweight and under $400 is something that hasn't been done before.
Okay, so memandangkan ramai sangat yang jawab soalan kita Jadi kita tak dapat pilih pemenangnya sekarang Tapi tak mengapa, pihak kami akan hubungi anda pemenang-pemenangnya Okay, berkenaan dengan proses dan cara penghantaran hadiah Pemenang-pemenang akan diumumkan di slot seterusnya uh, Baiklah, terima kasih sekali lagi Mr. Lim atas perkongsian yang sangat menarik pagi ni Saya pasti ramai dapat belajar perkara yang baru hari ini. Okey, dan saya harap perkongsian ini dapat memberi galakan kepada peserta program untuk menceburkan diri dalam bidang STEM terutamanya bidang kejuruteraan pembuatan. Jadi ingin saya ingatkan kepada para penonton, slot terakhir bagi program berbicara ini yang bertajuk kecerdasan buatan ataupun artificial intelligence akan berlangsung pada pukul 2 hingga 3 setengah petang nanti. Dan diingatkan juga kepada hadirin semua untuk mengisi borang kehadiran melalui link yang telah disediakan di ruangan komen. Para pensyara yang mengisi borang tersebut akan mendapat mata kredit SPL KPM manakala bagi pelajar anda akan diberikan e-sijil penyertaan. Baik, uh, jadi itu, itu saja saya rasa. Terima kasih Mr. Lim. Hopefully we'll meet you, next time. Uh, yeah. So uh, Shakila, if anybody want to uh, form this, uh, you know, Facebook and uh, let me know, uh, willing to help. Thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, everybody hope you, you gain something out of this uh, session. So we we'll see you in future. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.